Now when I first got these Bang & Olufsen H9 third generation headphones, I must admit they annoyed me because they seemed almost perfect, but with several serious flaws, in my view, that spoilt the experience for me. And this video is about how I fixed those flaws, with the result that they're now pretty much my current favourite B&O headphones. I'm Steve from Sounds Heavenly. My day job is helping people to connect and get the best from their Bang & Olufsen products, but I'm also a lifelong B&O owner and collector. So I will say at the start, if you've got any questions about getting the best from your B&O, please drop me a line at soundsheavenly.com and I'll be happy to help. And incidentally, you'll find there pretty much every cable you'll ever need for connecting Bang & Olufsen. With that in mind, I think you know what the first suggestion will be that I'm gonna make, and that is, connect your headphones with a cable. It does have to be said, these are great Bluetooth headphones, but Bluetooth is not the last word in sound quality or reliability. A fairly basic and cheap cable is included with these headphones, but it's not something that I would be happy to use myself. A simple upgrade, this cable that I'm gonna suggest from my website costs less than 5% of the value of the headphones when they were new less than 20 British pounds, and you can get a really good quality braided cable with metal plugs and gold connectors that brings out the best sound of the headphones and gets them working reliably. There's no issue of Bluetooth dropping out, of losing sound when they go out of range. They just work and they just sound good. And the second hack, again, is equally simple. Whether you use the headphones wired or wireless, download the Bang & Olufsen app. It's free of charge on iOS and Android phones, and it allows you, once you've linked the headphones to your phone on Bluetooth, to tweak and customize the sound. And that's essential because if these were bought new, they will default to the optimal sound profile, which I think is not optimal. And it, if they're pre-owned or ex-demonstration when you get them, the situation could be even worse because they will remain in the sound setting that the last user decided they wanted. Now, I would recommend that you try the neutral sound profile in the B&O app. It does what it says on the tin. It is a lovely, even and clear sound which gives all frequencies at a nice, even level for pleasant listening for any type of music, movies or spoken word podcasts. So really can't recommend that highly enough. Get the B&O app, try the neutral setting, and you can further tweak the sound using the tone options in the app if you wish. So these first two hacks are nice and simple and I think will give a benefit to everyone who uses these headphones. The following three come with a caveat and they are your mileage may vary. I hope that they will be as useful to some viewers as they have been to me, but to some people they will not help at all. So if that's the case, I apologise in advance. Please don't worry. Please don't complain in the comments. These are not intended to work for everyone. But if they work for you, please let me know. And I'll give you a little bit of quick background to the third hack. I was a child in 1980s Britain, where a common sight on the roads was the Austin Allegro. A car which, bizarrely, was more aerodynamic driving backwards than forwards. So what's the link to the H9 headphones? Well, astute viewers will see I was actually wearing these backwards originally, because inside the ear cup, if I give this a little twist anti-clockwise, about the distance from 12 to 11 on a clock face, you will see that in the middle of the ear cup is a little bar which sticks out by a few millimetres and holds itself out over the middle of the loudspeaker. For most people this won't be a problem, but if, like me, you have strange shaped ears, which don't worry I won't bore you with a close-up of, then this actually sticks right into the ridge in the middle of my ear. 
The solution is shockingly simple. Just turn the headphones around and they are supremely comfortable when worn backwards. Now, yes, I know, I know that that reverses the left and right sound channels. And so please don't complain in the comments. I'm going to explain what I did to resolve that. But just as a child, when I had my first pair of shoes and they were marked with a big L and an R, these ear cups are also similarly marked. The headphone manual says that they're not exchangeable, but they actually are on the third generation H9s. You can simply give them a little twist anti-clockwise, remove them and swap them over. So if you find the headphones to be comfortable, ignore this hack. This is only for people who, like me, find them uncomfortable when worn the right way around. So I have unclipped the ear cups and swap them over. And I now wear them happily in reverse. For casual listening from my phone, I don't worry about that. I just let the sound be swapped. If I'm listening to something that does particularly need the channels the right way around, I'll briefly wear them the right way around. For a minute or two, that doesn't hurt my ears too much. But 90% of the time, I actually use these headphones cabled to a Windows PC. And the way that I resolve the channels is with a free Windows app called Equalizer APO. I've mentioned it in previous videos. And one line of code, which I'll put on screen, allows you to reverse the left and right audio channels. So the headphones will then work as normal, but worn comfortably back to front. So the fourth hack comes from what I consider to be the greatest asset of the H9s. This is quite unique for active Bluetooth headphones and it's unique amongst Bang & Olufsen's high-end headphones in that they can be used passively. You don't have to click the switch and power them on and use the battery in order to play the headphones. Obviously, if you use them via Bluetooth, you do need power, but you can plug in a cable and play them without powering them up. For reference, Bang & Olufsen's HX, Portal and H95 headphones don't have this option. When the battery goes flat, the headphones are dead until it's charged again. Now this passive mode on the H9s is meant as a get out of jail free card for when you use up all the battery power. You want to keep playing the headphones, but you can't charge them. And by default, the sound is not great. The treble is, level is very low. The sound is muted and lumpy. It's not brilliant, but it's easily fixed. Again, using the Equalizer APO app on Windows PC or laptop, you can filter the sound to give back that nice neutral sound. So I'll put on screen now the code that I typed into Equalizer APO to give the correct filter settings to restore the neutral sound so that when used passively, these headphones will perform just as well as when they're powered up and set in the neutral sound profile. Now, why would anyone bother with this? Well, this is how I use them 90% of the time. In my working day, I'll probably use them for an hour or two in total, and I'll be putting them on. I'll listen to a video with diagnostics from a customer, maybe for 30 seconds, take them off again, carry on with something else. I'll put them on again. John at Manchester's released a video. I'll watch that, great, I'll take them off again. I'll put them back on again for a quick call and then take them off and then I'll Skype. So I'll, I'll take them off again. And if I were to be clicking them on and off every couple of minutes, I think I'd wear that switch out within a few weeks. Sure, I can set them to have standby mode and become inactive after 15 minutes without being used, but I'd end up with a flat battery very quickly and for me, the convenience of headphones is always that fact of being able to just put them on and use them, not having to go fiddle around and find a switch every time. So by entering the code into Equalizer APO, I can use these with the PC with no messing about. They just give perfect sound. And on the odd occasion, maybe 10% of the time, I want to travel somewhere and plug them into my phone, I can switch them on and use them in active mode and use the noise cancelling. 
Now the final hack is a further development of this. So when I recently tried out Bang & Olufsen's flagship H95 headphones, I made a frequency response measurement of the way they performed in their optimal sound setting. I coded this into Equalizer APO and mapped out the filters that would be required to give that sound or an approximation of it to any headphones. So appearing on screen now is the code that you could add to Equalizer APO that would allow you to use either H9s powered on in their neutral setting or combined with the code from the previous hack in their passive mode to give an emulation of how you would get your sound if you upgraded to the H95s. So in no way is this intended to be a replacement for H95s. The comfort, the quality, the sound is it's unsurpassed and the intention here really is to give you an indication of why you need to get to your B&O dealer to hear H95s for yourself. So purely for education and information purposes, I'd invite you to try this code and get a feel for just how good H95s can be with your favourite music. Now I'm going to be following up with a further review of the H9s in the coming weeks which is going to be from a very unusual location, one where I don't think anyone has ever reviewed headphones before. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and you'll be the first to see that very unusual headphone review when it arrives. If you've got any questions about connecting or getting the best from your Bang & Olufsen products, whether it's headphones, loudspeakers or music systems, please get in touch at soundsheavenly.com and I'll be happy to help. Thank you very much for watching.